so often, the sports hangover touches on mature topics. Discretion is advised. Welcome to the sports hangover. I'm Michael Benatar. That's Jeremy Garrison. And Jeremy, you can't see this, but there is a new lower third underneath our video. Oh, I bet I like it, though. I'm pretty <laughs> I'm, sure I like it. I'm sure you do, Jeremy. You always like it. Uh, Did you spell our names right? That we'll have to see when it gets published. It's always dicey. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, right now, as this video has been re- been released, the draft is currently happening or is over, depending on when you've been watching this. I mean, that's not necessarily true. You can watch this before the draft. You could, but what time is the draft today? 8 p.m. It's 8, 8 p.m. today. Oh, so if you're watching this at work, the draft hasn't started yet, basically. basically so we're going to play yeah. a game later. You know, the here's Johnny. Yeah. I have a question. <laughs> Where's Johnny going? Okay. So we're going to play that game later. Do, do you want to play it right now? I mean, let's save it for – let's do a teaser. Let's tease Okay. The All right. Well, Jeremy – the NFL draft is bringing in a ton of strippers. That's that's the report I'm getting. I have some really good quotes from the strip Wait, club. Not the NFL themselves. No, 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 no. But strippers are welcoming the NFL draft to New York. Like, I oh, see. come on, boys. Sure, We're right here. Up. So it's Vivid Cabaret in New York City. So if you live there, maybe you could see some uh, new – maybe you're – team's new quarterback could be there johnny manzel could be hanging out at vivid cabaret this weekend oh they they welcome they want to welcome all the first uh, round draft prospects they said this is where the big boys party in the beginning you can't make it rain on us with stacks of you can make it rain on us with stacks of singles (laughs) but there's hoping that your second contract you'll use stacks of hundreds Okay. The, uh, this is the girls at uh, Vivid <laughs> Cabaret in New York City. They're very excited about the. I guess so about their single dollars. But these guys that are getting drafted. Aren't supposed to have any cash yet, unless they made some illegal deal. They shouldn't have any money until well, after the draft. Jeremy, there's a thing called credit card and cash advance. Uh, what- yeah, Teddy Bridgewater got a cash advance. Bought his mom a Cadillac. <laughs> so he you you could advance. do a lot of cash advance and uh, get that credit card maxed out before you even get your contract. Just a couple keys to the strip club before we move forward. I think we've all learned some things. One is be careful with your hands. Don't touch anything you're not supposed to touch. That's one. Jeremy, that that thing, hold on real quick. That touching people, that is only in Florida, I think. I don't think many other strip clubs allow that. Only in dirty Florida is that allowed. There's some some bad ones. (laughs) Not that I've ever participated, but there's some bad ones. Also, our – a good friend of ours is in love with a stripper right now. Don't fall in love with a stripper. Who? That's one of the worst things you could do. Does his name Don't, start with an S and end with an yes. M? That guy <laughs> is in love with a stripper. He's been frequenting strip clubs, and now he's in love with one, can, and that's not a good look. Can we talk really. about him for a second? A lot of money and nothing to do with it, so he's spending countless amounts of money on strippers. It's just not good. Use your money well, more I can't wait that. to go see And then see the third Sam. one, I got a third one. <laughs> Don't let a stripper come back to your hotel room because they will try to steal shit. And I've seen that happen firsthand, Mike. So just be careful. Uh, I, I've seen that too. You really got to persuade them to get that back. All right. So we're going to get to where's Johnny a little bit later. We'll get back to the draft. I want to talk about the Sterling Stiviano thing that continues. So did you see the awkward interview she gave with Barbara Walters? I, I, saw, I saw pieces of it. It just, her face, I couldn't stay. It looked really bad. Like a lot of plastic surgery. Like, a lot of surgery and it didn't go well. I don't no, think. Like no. her nose is almost not a nose anymore. Like she kept saying, it's like, I'm not in love with him. I love him. Stuff like that. Like really, yeah. like it seemed like they planned out like, okay, this is how you're going to answer all these questions. Okay. So here you go. go. It was really bad. I like the line where she said, I'm his right hand arm, yeah. or right hand Whatever hand, yeah, right yeah, hand, yeah. leg, arm, whatever. She botched it just like I did. Yeah. It was really bad. But now she is getting investigated for extortion. I called this Sounds a little bit right. last week with our lawyer friend. Mm-hmm. She's the one who broke the law here. She's the one who recorded him illegally and now tried to sell the video to TMZ. She got a half a million dollars for selling that video to TMZ. And now Donald Sterling's like, what the fuck? So Sterling is investigating her and maybe – he can put some of the blame on her, which makes a lot of sense. You and know she's not smart. This is a little uh, salt in the wound. Uh, Sterling now has cancer. so Prostate cancer. Prostate. So it's like, Unconfirmed, not but confirmed. But you kind of feel bad for him. Like a dying guy, this girl comes in, takes advantage of him. He's slightly racist and delusional, but – it sucks. It's it's a weird story. He's so he's lost the team. They the Clippers what they fired someone Mike 
that they fired the team president and now the oh, C- I don't know. They, I didn't even the the NBA it. appointed someone to so run the, the NBA, team. Yeah, the NBA is appointing somebody. I don't know who. Is it maybe the whole all the board members are now like kind of in control? Because doesn't the NBA? It's weird. Like the NBA does own some teams, correct? I mean, they don't. They take control when like owners dip out. Like they took control of the Hornets for a while, yeah. and then they moved to Charlotte and. And they got bought by someone. Okay. See, it's just weird. I, I don't it's know. Weird. I mean, they're probably doing something similar to that because I didn't know that they could take control of a team. But I guess if all the board members agree, it's like, okay, you're going to just do general operations. I don't know if you can just move the team. Like, are they going to move the Clippers to San Diego and have a San Diego The Clippers? NBA wouldn't do that. But if an owner from San Diego buys the team, he can move them wherever he wants. If, if True. Votes. True. Sure. Well, I mean, could be interesting. talking about moving teams, I read an article, uh, the Bills could be sold. To Donald Trump? Uh, to somebody. I don't know who's going to buy I heard it. Donald Trump, the Donald. I mean, that would be good. He did He did own – I watched this really good documentary on Netflix about uh, the USFL when that was around. Oh, you're so into the USFL. <laughs> I'm really you're into it. it. If you ever get a chance, watch that documentary about the USFL on Netflix. Really interesting. At one time, it was almost bigger than the NFL. Donald Trump had his hand in it. A lot of reporters, a lot of big-time football players were in the USFL at some point. Really interesting stuff, but – other than that, yes, Donald Trump could own a team. He's done it before. And would he move the team, do we think, out of Buffalo or keep him there? He would probably move it closer to the city and have another another New York. Three teams in the city, really? Why not? Do one for each borough? <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he'd move him to L.A., but maybe some owner will move him to L.A., Mike. Maybe that's your ticket that's... to a team that you are craving. NFL in Los Angeles. And I really am. I kind of thought it would happen by now. I don't know. Like the Jags are adding on to their stadium in Jacksonville. They're yeah. getting the largest video board in the world. Bigger than what Dallas has? Yes. Wow. Yes. Because it's not above the field. It's on oh, the yeah, sideline. Yeah, yeah. So it's like the Jags aren't going anywhere. If the Bills get bought by like a Buffalo guy, they're not going anywhere. Is it possible that LA might not get a team for like 10 or 15 years? <sighs> Jeremy, I feel like we've been talking about this for years. Like the first year we started the show. the show for years. <laughs> <I know. laughs> We started the show years ago, and we're like, yeah, NFL teams coming to L.A. Like, people have mocked up plans. People know where it's going to be. But I don't know. I, I mean, if people are going to sell a team and want to keep it in the same spot, there's no no chance. Because the Rams at one time, Jacksonville, now the Bills, and who knows what could happen. It, just, it doesn't seem like it's happening anytime soon. Speaking of L.A., though, Dr. Dre is buying Tom Brady's huge mansion in Los Angeles. And Brentwood, are you familiar with Brentwood? I, I do know where Brentwood is. A very nice so place. So tell us about Brentwood. Uh, adjacent to uh, Westwood. Or no, is it almost like north of Westwood? It's a nice nice little place, nice community. You're, you're very close to the Santa Monica Mountains and the Malibu and the beaches and stuff. But you're not, The house is tremendous. It's yeah, so big. there's a lot of room out there. So you can build Tom Brady room. sold it. The question, what is Dr. Dre doing? Is he relevant any longer? Dr. Dre... Do you do you not see everybody with Dr. Dre headphones? Dre beats. <laughs> Did you just... never thought of that? Are you serious? I never thought of that, but he's not making music, is he? Yeah, he still produces. This guy is like all behind the scenes. It's like Eminem, but now Eminem decided he still wants to rap. Clearly, he's making a lot of cash to buy Tom Brady's house. It is gigantic if you take a look at it. How much? How, how much did he pay for it? I don't know that. Okay. Uh, ESPN first take. Uh, the boss. He's leaving. He's going to NBC. I guess he's going to do the Today Show, right? He's brought in to like run the Today Show. He's going to be the vice president of the Today Show. He created all the big time shows that now define ESPN and really ESPN too. First Take, Sports Nation, Oberman Show. Mm-hmm. They were nothing. No, numbers never it. lie. That's right. Good one. His name is Jamie Horowitz. So it's interesting because ESPN's connected with Disney, Good Morning America, ABC, big fight with Today, and they didn't want to let him out of his contract, and Today was fighting for uh, like six months, they've been trying to get Horowitz on board at NBC, and now it finally happened, which is cool. So what's this mean for NBC? Because, I mean, I have not watched a Good Morning America or Today show in years. Well, you're missing out. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, yeah. <laughs> you watch it every morning, Jeremy? Every other morning. A cup of coffee. So I think we're going to see Skip Bayless on the Today show often. You think? <laughs> No, not really. But like that's what that's what Horowitz did at ESPN, and he's a really a genius how he came up with these debate style social media mm-hmm. poll questions, live votes, all that stuff. I think we'll see some of that emerging on the Today Show. Do you think that only works in sports though? Because you can debate. I mean, you can debate every single topic, but do you really want yeah. that to become your network morning show? A debate? 
No, but I think there's different elements you can take, like a more conversational instead of a news angle. Maybe it. Well, see what he does. I mean, it remains to be seen. But I just think it's interesting that he's leaving ESPN and going to NBC. Uh, I have more stories, Jeremy. This week, I do too. Right, we're going back and forth. You go. You go for it. Okay, so Floyd Mayweather won a big fight in Vegas this weekend, as he always wins. Of right? course. So he plays uh, fights Pacquiao. Justin Bieber hanging out with. Mayweather, this is not a good look for Floyd. I would think he knows that by now. Everyone is anti-Bieber. Like, even the believers are anti-Bieber at this point. Mm -hmm. Most people want him exported back to Canada, but Floyd still keeps him around, brings him out with them to the ring, posting pictures with them. Jeremy, I think it's something to do with all, like, the singers and the rapper. They, they want to be an athlete, but they were never, their body wasn't built to be an athlete. I don't know if you've noticed. Have you seen Drake? around he's been hanging out with the raptors yes. really yes. he's like he's on the sideline like, all the time yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. really really a proud canadian very proud canadian loves his raptors yeah. i don't know what it is i i just feel like the 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 athletes also have this weird like they want to be with the the cool hip like singer rapper or whatever so i think it's a good match like they're both a lot of egos they like being together being seen together is like uh, ego like a huge ego baby it's like oh here we are <laughs> i get that to a degree but bieber is not he's not anyone anymore everyone hates bieber he's like him and the mayor of toronto are the two like bad canadians <laughs> now. they need to go but away what no if, what if bieber it. and mayweather are like just throwing like going to strip clubs just throwing their money around wouldn't wouldn't you want to hang out with bieber if he was just like hey man I mean, that's the only thing they have in common that's all they have in common now is money and fame it's not success because bieber is done man <laughs> ship sail. That You're ship calling is it. Done. Bieber is done. Bieber is done. He should be go back to Canada. 2014. Really he's send him up there. All right. Uh, talking about money, okay. Wes Welker. All right. So Wes Welker was at the Kentucky Derby this yeah. weekend. I guess he he won. I I also bet on the game. I was clueless how to gamble <laughs> on this on the races. I've never done it yeah. before. So it's. I, I so got, did you pick a winner? Or did you go like win? Oh, play, Jeremy. Show, the exact, I I listen right? to gambling websites and stats. Nice. I bet on uh, the favorite, and I won. You won. I won. I won. I won like I put like fifteen bucks in, and I won like fifty six dollars. I was very excited because I didn't know so what it's I was like doing. Four to one odds. Something. Like, it was five. Yeah, I don't know what it was, but I won <laughs> money. It was nice. I was excited. It was too easy to gamble on races because they want you to just keep betting. But you on just horses. bet on the winner, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah, but they have like brackets. It's like, are they going to get first? Are they going to place? Are they going to show like in the first top three? It's it's complicated. But I'm guessing Wes Welker might have put in yeah. a couple thousand. Stack this stuff. The what? And he was so he was drunk, wearing a colorful outfit, handing out hundred dollar bills to everyone who came by him. Yes. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I saw a picture of it. That's what Wes Elker was doing. He was yeah. handing out $100 bills at the Kentucky Derby dressed in this outfit, and it was really amazing that that was happening. I, I appreciate that he was doing that because there was so – cool. I didn't understand. All right, so I was very hungover that day, and I was watching. The, I turned it on. I'm like, oh, I'll turn it on. And yeah. I thought it started at like 1130. It didn't air my time until like 345. The celebrities were just hanging out there all day doing nothing. It's a red carpet show. You got a little taste of Josh Elliott on the Kentucky Derby. I know you saw him. I, I did see him. Not not a fan. Not a fan. <laughs> and so California Chrome won, which was cool because yep. it's a favorite and it's named after your state. And uh, it wasn't as exciting when the favorite wins. I'll say that. Yeah. But you should definitely bet on it next time. California Chrome, there is like, I don't know what the stat was, but he can he outran every other single horse there by seconds. By a lot. By a lot. So I mean, seconds are a lot, I guess, when you're racing. Well, he like pulled away at the end, though, on the last stretch. It was neck and neck before oh, that. Jeremy, he was like third for a Jeremy, while. In a, in a, you don't sprint the whole time in a marathon, do you? You just kind of like you this save isn't it. It's a marathon. It's a Kentucky Derby. I know, I know. But they they got to like pace themselves. It's not a full-out so sprint. you're going to bet on them again oh, in this I'm, next race. I'm putting all the winnings right back into it. And, and then the third time, third time the triple crown. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I believe that much. I got to see how he does this time. It's all about the second race because if the horse, if the same horse wins the first two, then you have so much interest in the third one. But if California Chrome doesn't win the second one, no one cares oh, about the but third one. But then you one. bet on the third off. one, though. That's when no one cares about him. You bet on the third one. You don't bet on him if he loses the second one. He's not going to win the third one. Why not? 
Because his confidence, like, shot the, the horse doesn't know the difference. They smack him around. They stop feeding now, him for days. I didn't know this, but it matters where they place the horses in those cages. I didn't, it's a big deal. Yeah, I didn't know it matters, like, if you're on the outside or the inside. Wanna, it's like, think about it. You're running around a circle. You want to be closer to the inside, I not know. the outside. I know. So it's, it makes sense, right? how do they pick it? That's that's what I want to know. I think it's an it's un- out of a It's like a random draw out of a hat. Okay. It's old, old I'm sorry. You got another story? All right. You're going to play Where's Johnny Going? Woo! Right. So the draft is tonight. It may have already happened, but play along with us. So we're going to make some predictions on where Johnny Manziel is going. I need you to participate here, Mike. Uh, we need Who else is th- going to do it? Well, I'm participating. Oh, okay. We need three teams at mm-hmm. three, two, and most likely of the three landing spots that Johnny goes. And if I'm wrong or you're wrong or someone's wrong, okay. someone's going to get a little whooping oh, on next week's show. So okay. we're going to hold you to it next week. Okay. So I need number three, yeah. number two, and the most likely – Landing spot. You want to go first or should I'll I? I'll go first. I'm going to say my number three. Okay. Dallas Cowboys. Whoa. How are they going to jump hey, up and get him? Hey. Or is he going to fall? Hey, who knows? I'm allowed to throw it out there, right? Okay. Can I get my number three? I, yeah, you can do we'll that. go back and forth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Jacksonville at number three, Ooh. I think, has a great chance to draft them. Not much buzz there in Jacksonville. Number three, they could sit tight and take Johnny right there. I mean, I, I, I guess I would go with Houston. Wow, I like it. Number one. Houston. Number one, Houston Texans. Now, would they take him first overall, or are they going to trade back and draft him? I mean, we'll see, because I'm sure if they knew, like, who, who's picking number one right now? Houston. Houston's picking number one. Yeah. If they knew that maybe Jacksonville wanted Clowney or the Bills wanted Clowney, maybe you trade down a little, get there, get that second pick. Whoever has, who has the second pick? St. Louis, but they don't want to move up. They'd no. rather move down than move up. Okay. So, but then you could take, I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of different ways you could do it. But you can't come up and get Clowney, which is crazy. It seems like Houston doesn't love Clowney that much, which I kind of love him. So who do you, who do you got for number? Number two for me, I think the Tampa Bay Bucks are going to be number two, Mike. <laughs> they have Lovey Smith loves. Yeah. Get it? Yeah, I, loves I, I get Johnny it. A lot football. of these zingers today. <laughs> a lot of, full of them. So I think there's a good chance Tampa jumps from number seven to number two, very similar wow. to the trade that the Redskins made to go from six to two to draft RG3 just recently, Mike. So I think there's a good chance the Bucks give up a lot. They have to give up a lot. So Houston, not interested in Johnny, loses the misses out on Johnny first pick. Somehow Bucks get the second round pick and get the, the second, second pick, pick in the draft. draft. Yeah. Wow. Because you have to jump Jacksonville because I know Jacksonville's interested. All right. My my number one, if he goes yeah. to the Browns, that's where I'm wow. that's where I'm hoping he goes. He goes to the Browns and he he takes them to the Super Bowl. They're a Super Bowl caliber team with a good quarterback. I, I'm interested in that. I mean, I, I'm with you with Cleveland number one. I think that's the most likely spot. They just sit there at four and draft him. Now, Jay Glazer, one of the best insiders, right? You know Jay Glazer. Of course. Jay. He said today. Not a chance in hell the Browns draft Johnny Manziel. Now, is that a smoke screen that the Browns are putting out, or is that factual? I would go with a lot of smoke screens. I feel like Clowney so, might go a lot higher than he's actually listed. I think that Bridgewater kid might go a lot higher. Because all these teams need, like, the top five teams or six, seven teams need a quarterback. Yeah. They're pretty bad. And yeah. the Bucks are really bad, stuck with uh, whatever that Glennon guy. Mike Glennon, yeah. sure. But they just signed Josh McCown from the Bears. Lovey Smith loves him too. And they gave him a lot of money. They gave him six it's not funny the second time. They gave him sixteen million, this backup quarterback. That's a lot so of money. So we both think Cleveland's most uh, interested. If he goes to Dallas or Houston, I'll give you some cash on next week's show. If he goes to Tampa okay. or Jacksonville, um I owe you, you owe cash. a lot of money. Yes. Why don't we why don't we just bet another uh, cheap jersey from our favorite websites? A Johnny Manziel jersey. A Johnny Manziel jersey. How about that? <laughs> I like whoever it. I like goes it. number one. We buy that jersey. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so whoever goes number one, if if he doesn't go number one, you gotta buy a clowny jersey. Gotta buy a clowny jersey. I don't know about that. All right, Jeremy, this is the biggest news of the day. I saved it best for last. Okay, Jeremy, this was when I saw this. I my jaw dropped. Like good, bad. How? What's yeah, your I'll, emotion? I'll, Set my emotion was a little sad, a little pissed, but then also happy because this guy moved away. So it's good. Wow. Golden Tate 
was cheating with Russell Wilson's wife. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Now, I don't know. All right, so there's a whole bunch of – there's a lot of theories here. Let me, let me go through the Whoa. first one. First one is Golden Tate was cheating with Russell Wilson's wife. Sources tell us that Golden Tate and Wilson's wife were having an affair. And eventually was revealed to Russell. Now Golden Tate is with the Lions. I don't know how this happened. The second theory, which which could be definitely understandable why the first theory was happening. They say a lot of people have been friends with him since he's been in college or whatever. But they, the sources say that the two of them have been pretty much living separately since the Super Bowl. Some people think he might be playing for the other team. Russell? Wait a second! You <laughs> dropped in bombs. So you're saying oh. Golden Tate? Let's start, let's back up. Okay, Golden okay. Tate. Golden Tate was banging yeah. Mrs. Russell Wilson after they got married. Yes. Russell Wilson throwing balls to Golden Tate. Mm-hmm. Golden Tate throwing balls at Russell Wilson's wife. Zing zing zing. <laughs> <laughs> and now Golden Tate left as a free agent. He got paid by Detroit, mm-hmm. so he's out of town. Russell. Mrs. Russell Wilson had to make a decision. Yeah. Do I stay with Russell or do I go to Detroit? She wanted to go to Detroit. <laughs> Russell divorces. Now Russell doesn't have to be with the woman but anymore. I think, now he can play. I think Golden Tate might have been married as well, which throws That's another funny. wrinkle in. But we don't care as much as Golden we, Tate. No, we don't care about so that. So also, but where are you getting the Russell Wilson? Is these are thing? sources? These are sources from the these internet. Sources in I'm not saying these are true or fa- I mean false, but they the biggest one is he could be gay. Now that it's could. Now isn't that a? It's kind of a go-to. Like, oh, he's getting a divorce. What's his deal? He's probably gay. That's kind of a go-to. Yeah, but you got to think like, all right. I mean, all right. Listen, the biggest thing is Golden Tate was possibly screwing Mrs. Wilson. That's a big deal. That's and a really big deal. When you deal. say possibly, I think it's pretty certain. <laughs> pretty certain. <laughs> well, it's messed up. Russell throws him passes. That's what Go- Golden Tate makes money I via know. Russell Wilson. Now they must have. And turns around and bangs. I, know. I, mean, I don't think he knew. I think he probably found out after the Super Bowl or like right afterwards. Before it, the divorce, though. Well, when did the. Yeah, when he, after the Super Bowl, they were getting a divorce. I thought Russell was like, I'm a Super Bowl MVP. I'm a, I'm a quarterback of a champion. I don't need to be married. I can go be single. I mean, Jeremy, there's a lot. We'll never know. He, he went to the team and told the team that they're getting a divorce. So I guess he wanted it to be like, hey, guys, here's what's going on. Very, it was very therapeutic. Yeah, yeah, so who knows? I'm glad he's happy Golden Tate's out of, out of here. He's, he's single now, single Super Bowl <laughs> champion. He can go out and he can do what Gronk does. Have Gronk summers, g- summer parties. I don't see Russell being like that. I know. Well, maybe he should hang it. out with Gronk a little and see what happens. I don't think that's a good thing for Russell Wilson <laughs> to do. I don't think it's a good uh, thing for By Gronk. the way, there was a Gronk signing over Cinco de Mayo. He was in uh, Ohio partying for Cinco de Mayo. Yo soy fiesta. Yo soy fiesta. <laughs> in Ohio? What's he doing there? That's no like- idea, but he, that's where he was spotted for Cinco de Mayo. That's no fun. I have one more story here, right. changing uh, topics a little bit. Did you see Kevin Durant's MVP speech after I, one? I only saw a clip. I didn't even actually listen to the whole thing. I saw him crying. That's he brought the house down. He had a thirty-minute speech. He he was speaking so highly of his mother that she got a standing ovation by the whole crowd. He mentioned each one of his teammates by name. Wow! Thank them individually for what they mean to him. It was like really emotional. And I was thinking about it. It's the anti-LeBron. Mm-hmm. LeBron has taken my talent to South Beach. And Kevin Durant is so thankful of what's around him and where he came from. He told this story of how a single mother, they moved into an apartment of his brother and his mom, and they just all huddled around and hugged each other because that's all they had, and they knew it. And it was, like, so emotional. And he came from there. It was really it was really cool. And I became a Kevin Durant fan last night watching that speech, so and it just makes me hate LeBron even more. The game is on right now, I think. They're playing the Clippers, or soon to be on. Are they going to win tonight? They, they played last night, so let's not make a prediction. <laughs> Wait, I thought they were playing tonight. Last night. Well, last night, today's Thursday when the show's out, but tonight is Wednesday <laughs> when we're recording it. Keep them guessing, man. Oh, all right. Uh, all right. Yeah, I, think, I think the Clippers uh, will come back in game two. I do. What? Come back? Came, in? back? came back in game two because they played game one already. And won it. Clippers the won. Thunder, I thought the Thunder killed them. No, Clippers killed them. Are you sure? I'm 100% sure because I bet well, on the that's game. That's why we're the experts. <laughs> they beat them like we'll a... check on that. Okay. 
Maybe we'll I'm check wrong. On that. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I check it real quick just so we can know. I'm going to tell everybody where they can find this. So you can go to YouTube. Yeah, the, the Thunder won big time. I thought there was the Clippers. No. Are you sure? It wasn't 122, like 105? No, Chris Paul, yes. The Clippers, That's, yes. Yes, so I'm, I'm right. Still, I'm looking at it right now. I'm still confused. All right. <laughs> Game one. I can't really tell. All right. YouTube.com backslash sports hangover. Uh, what else? At TSH podcast on Twitter all the time. Tweeting a lot all the time. Also, it's a players championship week. One of the biggest weeks in golf. Check out your Sunday bag.com. If you want to ah. go on what's going on there, our friend Amy is publishing a lot of stories on the players championship. It's one of golf's biggest events. Tiger's not there. I was there this week, Mike. Uh, beautiful weather. Should be very nice. Did, did you get the golf a little? I did. I played golf yesterday. I beat my boss in golf. Woo! Such an athlete. Then I won a softball game at night. Wow. I was an athlete Jeremy, yesterday. Is this a, I feel like this is a little too much activity for you. You should. Do. It's a lot. <laughs> I'm really sore today, but I'm, I feel like I'm coming out of my retirement here, my hibernation. <laughs> like winning at golf and winning at softball, like two big time. Time, time to go too. hang out with our friends at the strip club. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Fall in love with a stripper, you kids at home. Put up your molested arrest or abused. We'll be back next week. See ya.